Hey, Josh Zaring, Jay Zaring Studios. This is part two, the part two video of uh, focus stacking images for product photography. And I'm gonna be combining all the images that I shot in the first video in Photoshop, uh, stacking them and then combining them. And then a little bit of processing and uh, this one actually has a little bit of touch up that I have to do because it didn't perfectly align things. So that's actually like a real world, more of a real world focus stacking thing. Uh, even though this was a fairly simple stack with a plain white background, you know, as long as you get the lighting right, right it usually works out really well. Uh, and the black products, you know, it's pretty much a black and white image, even though it was simple. Some things didn't get perfectly lined up and there's some jaggy edges here and there and then I'll show you what I do normally to fix it. Sometimes it requires a little bit too much work and you might just have to reshoot it, uh, but that's not too common. I highly recommend watching part one of this uh, so you can see what I was working with, uh, my lighting and the distance I was, focal length, everything like that. I, I show all of the, uh, every, every shot you see, my settings and the shot afterwards. I'll put that link in the description and right up in here and you can watch that first if you'd like. If not, you can just see how I combine them. Fairly straightforward, built-in process in Photoshop. <laughs> This is real simple. You just go to File, Scripts, and then Load Files into Stack. And you find your photos. And here's all the photos that I took in the first video. Click on Attempt to Automatically Align Source Images. Even though it was shot on a tripod, uh, I always turn it on anyway just to make sure everything's perfectly aligned. Because you really, really need it to blend the layers. Okay, now you just make sure all your layers are selected and go to Edit, Auto Blend Layers, Stack Images, and make sure Seamless Tones and Colors are selected even if you maintain a consistent white balance. Uh, it never hurts. Okay, that's pretty decent. Uh, so I'm gonna have to fix this area here, but that, that's a fairly simple fix. Uh, it doesn't always, doesn't always perfectly align everything. It doesn't always perfectly blend things. I got a screen deal, screen problem right here. Uh, but otherwise, everything is in focus. And that's the main goal here. I'm gonna shift control E to combine all those. And the first thing I wanna do is straighten this out. Control T, and uh, I wanna get my grid here. And now I'm gonna just give it a little crop here. Original ratio should be fine. Before I do any more editing, I'm just gonna uh, do my normal edits here. Just gonna bump the contrast here because this is basically a black and white image, even though it's not. But you can get away with cranking that contrast. I'm just going to go down through here, probably go to lasso tool and just fix this. And that's just going to be clone stamp here. And now I'm going to fix my screen here. Sometimes things with uh, LCD screens, even if they're off like this one is, uh, sometimes it gets a little screwy and you might have to retouch it. Uh, screens are fairly easy and most of the time you end up doing something to make the glass look cooler anyway. Uh, it's no excuse, but uh, that, that's what usually happens anytime I do a phone or a tablet or something like that, unless it's a matte finish. Matte finish screens uh, photograph wonderfully. And what I'm gonna do to this is actually just replace it. with a gradient. 
I'm going to create a new layer, get my gradient tool, and definitely black and a very, very dark gray. Just something uh, pretty close to what was already there. It's a little too light, I think. And then we have there's a pretty nice, nice uh, screen there with a lovely, lovely gradient. And we have something over here. Uh, in product photography, sometimes there's a lot of touch ups. Uh, like I didn't, I apparently didn't bother to get the dust off this. This is my phone. This was just an example. Sometimes you, uh, you'll notice things that you don't see with your own eyes. Once you get into the computer and it's all blown up like this, you'll see the dust and scratches, everything like that. It's good to, it's good to have a new product and it's good to have it dust free. Um, Sometimes a microfiber rag and maybe even some Windex, uh, depending on the material. Uh, just make sure you get it as clean as you possibly can. I didn't clean this at all. Uh, I cleaned the vape off and uh, just ran with it for the tutorial. But ordinarily, I would uh, obsessively clean it. So I'm going to select this and I'm going to leave a little bit of the white from the phone in. Just the black of the edge here. I don't want the curve because I'm literally just going to copy this over here. Then you just realign it here. You can see something weird happening. It happened that it ends up looking like a color fringe from a lens, even though it's not. And sometimes that will happen. You just got to basically be prepared for a lot of things when you do this. And then I usually blend it just by erasing part of it away on the edges. And I actually am, I'm going to make this uh, black and white anyway to get rid of the rest, the rest of that little bit of blue that was there. I'm just gonna go hue saturation and just drop the saturation because uh, I don't need to do anything special to it. And you can barely see a difference other than that, that blue is gone now. So there you go. It, it looks complicated at first, but this one is actually a very simple focus stack. Uh, I got a plain white background. As long as you get the lighting right with the white background, this is actually really simple. Uh, it's when you get into uh, blurring out a busy background or just a textured background. That's where it becomes a little bit more messy and a little bit more tedious. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, concerns, or suggestions uh, for this video or any upcoming tutorials, any ideas that you want to share with me, Go right ahead, keep creating, and keep it awesome. Join me on Patreon.com to take part in special rewards like Priority Question and Answer, Lightroom and Photoshop presets and actions, BTS videos and photos, previews for upcoming content, and even suggest ideas for tutorials. And also you have the option of being credited for your support of Jay Zaring Studios, which is really cool. Check it out at Patreon.com slash Jay Zaring.